Okay, moving on to our final task, task number four with the forwarding adjacency. Now we need to create an PLSTE tunnel number one from router R3 to R2 with the following parameters, and that's a bandwidth of 500 kbps, an explicit path that goes from R3, 5, 4, and 2, and we need to use the forwarding adjacency in the tunnel. Okay, so let's kind of delete all that. So we said the tunnel is going to go from 3, 5, 4, and 2, so that would be 3, 5, 4, and 2. So that would be our MPLSTE tunnel. And then it's just the way that the forward adjacency work. You need to create a tunnels bidirectionally. So it would be one tunnel per direction. So it would be two tunnels all together. That's why we need to create another MPLSTE tunnel. Number one in the opposite direction from R2 to R3. Okay, so we're going to have another tunnel. Let me use green this time that go from R2, 4, 5, and 3. So it has to follow the exact same path. Okay, just to make it bidirectional. And then we need to make the traffic from R6 to R7 loop back 12 prefer this path by adjusting the tunnel ISIS metric. Okay, before we start, I think we still have the interface on R1 shut down. So let's bring it back up right there, fast and zero, zero. So no shut. Okay, and before we begin, I want to do one quick show command on R1, which is show ISIS database uh, level two. And then I just want to see the link advertisement that's coming from R3. So it'll be R3.0000. And we want to do detail. Okay, so just want to have that up so we can compare our ISS database before and after we configure our MPLST tunnel on R3. Okay, so now on R3, we do IP explicit path. Name, we're going to go from R5 and then 4 and 2, and then we enable. Okay, so next hop IP will be 05, 04, and 02. And on the tunnel interface, IP and number, loop back 0, tunnel destination, going to 0 0.2, and then mode MPLS traffic engineering. MPLS traffic engineering. This time, instead of the auto route announced, we're going to use forwarding adjacency and then specify our bandwidth 500 and then our path option 1 explicit name and it will be R542. Okay, so tunnel came up. Let's do a quick verification. Do a sh uh, show MPLS traffic engineering tunnel. Okay, everything looks good. Make sure I look at the right one, which is the one that's originated on R3 right here. And here's the path 542. So 542. Now we have to create one that's in the reverse direction. So R2 IP explicit path name. We'll go the other direction will be 453. Okay, enable. Next address will be 045C. 453. Okay, and then on the tunnel configuration, I'm just going to see if I can copy that from R3. Okay, so obviously the destination will be different, so we'll change that. Everything else should be pretty much the same. And the name will be 453 and the destination will become router 3. Okay, give it a second. Tunnel came up, do show MPLS, traffic engineering, tunnel. Okay, so here we have a tunnel originated in R2 being up. And then it goes through four, five, and three. It terminates on R3. Okay, so now we have completed our bidirectional sets of tunnels between R2 and R3. So now what I want to show you is if we go back to R1 and do another show commands on the ISS database on the level two that's being advertised on R3, you can see that right here we're getting additional links that's being advertised. Okay, you can see that it wasn't there before. And now we have that. And it's just because the way that the forwarding adjacency works when you completed the bidirectional sets of tunnels, 
that particular tunnel will be advertised as if it's part of the ISIS. And from the perspective of other routers, that would be considered a actual links that the router has to consider as part of the path calculation. Okay, and this is where the forwarding adjacency differs from the auto route announce. So forwarding adjacency actually caused the MPLSTE tunnel to be viewed as a network link to all of the router that participate in ISIS. And on R1, if you show IP route ISIS, you can see right now to get to R7 loopback 12, R1 is still load balancing between the path to router R4 and R3 since the R1 has two paths right here, one's in that direction and the other one's in this direction. So now we need to make the traffic from R6 to R7 loopback 12 prefer this particular path by adjusting the metrics. Okay, so you can see that they are equal cost path with the metrics of 40. So somehow we're going to have to make R1 sees the metrics for the path towards R3 to have a lower metrics than the one that goes towards R4. Okay, so since our MPLS TE tunnel is being viewed as a link in the network, we can pretty much adjust the ISIS metrics on that tunnel. Currently that tunnel by default has a matrix of 10. So if we lower the ISIS metric for the tunnel to be anything lower than 10, we should be able to make R1 prefer this path to R7. Okay, so what we're going to do is to make the metrics of that tunnel to become 5. And to do that, we have to get under the tunnel interface. Okay, and then you adjust it as if it's a regular link. Okay, so that will be an ISIS metric. And you lower that to 5. And this is just going to be for a level 2. Okay, if you now go back to R1, and let me do a up arrow to show the database one more time. You can see that how the metrics has changed from 10. So let's scroll up real quick. So right here, by default, the metrics of the tunnel was 10, and now it has become 5. Okay, so what it means is if we do a show IP route ISIS one more time, we should be seeing the R1 preferring R3 now exclusively to get to R7 loop back 12. Okay, and that's because the metric has now become 35 and then compared to the other path, which was 40, obviously it's a lower metrics and that's why it's preferring this path. Okay, and just to confirm, we're going back to R6 and then do a trace routes. You can see it gets from R1 to R3 and then 5, 4, 2, 7. So 1 to 3 to 5 to 4, 2 and then 7. Okay, so you can see now since the MPLS TE tunnel is seen as being a part of the network and adjusting the metrics of that affects the way that the other router determine the best path to destination. So that completes our task number four. So as you can see that the MPLS TE tunnel behaves pretty much the same way as any other tunnel interface in the router in that you can pretty much force the traffic to the tunnel using either a static routes or policy based routing, but probably the most popular way of making the router start utilizing the MPLS tunnel is probably the auto route announce method. Since all it's required is just one command and then we'll start using the tunnel right away. And like I mentioned, that's usually used when you're trying to get the traffic from the edge from one side of the networks to the other. Okay, on the other hand, the forwarding adjacency command is also sometimes used when you have a special need for it. And that is whenever you want the MPLST tunnel to appear as if it's a link to all of other routers in the network so that way you can affect those routers routing decision. Okay, so that's pretty much wraps up our video on MPLSTE tunnel forwarding. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.